Last time, I told you about how Nokia's biggest operating system left the market. Basically, Symbian just got outdated and couldn't compete with Android and iOS. So Nokia realized they urgently needed to find a new operating system, and Mego seemed like it. It was planned as the new platform for all smartphones from the Finnish company. But something went wrong, and only one smartphone came out of it the Nokia N9. So why didn't Mego work out for Nokia? And what kind of system was it anyway? This is the History of Gadgets channel. Let's go figure out what went wrong with Mego. Today, I'll tell you about this dead system project. Let's start. Mego's story began long before Nokia. It was developed by Intel and the Linux Foundation as a free system for low-powered devices, specifically netbooks running Intel Atom processors. If anyone doesn't know, netbooks were these small laptops that were popular 10 years ago, which people bought mainly mainly for internet browsing and god knows what else, but Nokia chose exactly this system as their new platform, and it seemed like everything was set. The N9, the first Mego smartphone, was on the way. But then Stephen Elop became the head of the company, and this guy is hated by the entire Nokia community because he's the one who made the decision to switch Nokia smartphones to Windows Phone. And the most interesting thing is that before joining Nokia, Elop worked at Microsoft. So this dude came from Microsoft, then switched Nokia to Microsoft System system, and three years later sold to the same company. There are rumors that Elop was a real Trojan horse that Microsoft used to swallow poor Nokia, but that's not the point. Elop also announced that after switching to Windows Phone, there would be no more Mego smartphones. They would release the N9, but it would be the first and last. Of course, I got one on eBay, and today I'll tell you what makes it unique. In 2011, the N9 saw the light of day, and everyone understood this was a stillborn smartphone. They had already written off its system before release, and I Obviously, nothing good was to be expected. There were no apps for the new system. There wouldn't be updates for the system either, but Nokia fans still bought the N9. They wanted Nokia, not some Windows phone hybrid, so the phone was quite well known. Besides, there were things to appreciate about it. First, the design. In the top of the most beautiful smartphones, personally for me, first place goes to Nokia's made from a single piece of polycarbonate, and the N9 is exactly that. Thanks to the unibody construction, there are no gaps on the body. It doesn't have any play, and it just looks absolutely stunning. Personally, I just get high from looking at the N9. Because this is literal minimalism according to Dieter Ram's principles. Nothing unnecessary, but beauty is still preserved. However, in some places they overdid it. The micro USB cover is clearly unnecessary, and the sharp corners of the body? Everyone and their mother complained about them. They're beautiful, sure, but they dig into your hand, which is obviously unpleasant. Nevertheless, the N9 is still a successful smartphone. True, compared to the N8, they cut a lot, no more expected good camera, it's very mediocre here. And hardware-wise, the phone doesn't represent anything interesting, so let's go straight to the system. And here's a surprise, did you notice that the N9's front panel has no buttons at all? Today this is normal, but in 2011 everyone had at least a home button, here there isn't one. But why? Because Mego became one of the first systems built on gestures. Swipe from the edges and you get to the home screen. And remember, this is a 2011 phone. And where else have we seen this? Yeah, at the iPhone X presentation. There's definitely similarity, it even unlocks the same way. It's generally believed that Apple borrowed gestures from Nokia, but to be fair, in Mego they work differently. You can swipe not just from the bottom, but from any edge. And if you swipe and hold, it opens not multitasking, but a quick menu. By the way, Mego also has multitasking. It opens with a swipe on the home screen. And the coolest thing is, it's real multitasking. Meaning, when you have an app open, it won't close to save space. The phone kind of reminds you that you don't just have Android, but real Linux in your pocket. And if you swipe again, you get to a section where there should be a general social media news feed, but it doesn't work anymore. Mego is like having nothing unnecessary on your phone. You can't put widgets or wallpapers on the home screen, only create folders. Also, the system is unstable, constantly lags and freezes, but all this is because they simply didn't have time to finish it. The first versions of Android weren't great either, but they improved over time, so cut Mego some slack. This is version 1.0, raw and unfinished. And people knew this, but still bought the N9. One of the funniest oversights, you can't take pictures with the front camera. Whether Nokia engineers deliberately freed us from selfies is unclear, but this can be fixed with a third-party app. But can you live with the N9 today? That's a rhetorical question. The smartphone was hard to use even when it came out. Yeah, the Nokia N9 wasn't usable even at launch. There was no Instagram, no other clients. For some time, Mego held on thanks to third-party developers, but now it's completely dead. Of course, you can use it as a phone, surf the web through
through Opera, somehow open maps, but that's where the functionality ends. It's funny that even Symbian is doing better, but then again, the device park is much bigger. In short, life for N9 buyers wasn't sweet, but according to reviews, they weren't dissatisfied with the phone. After all, the excellent design and revolutionary system did their thing, but that's where Mego and Nokia parted ways. And as you know, then the Fins went to Windows Phone. And by the way, the Lumia 800 is almost a complete copy of the N9, just with tiles. What would have happened if Nokia had stayed with Mego? And nobody knows. Maybe it would have saved the company, maybe not. But the most interesting thing is some developers left Nokia and continued developing Mego, changing the name to Sailfish. In 2013, the first smartphone on this system came out, Jala. It was quite unusual, gained public attention, but it's unclear if it continued at all. And in 2015, something happened. Based on Sailfish, they started making a Russian operating system called Aurora. Sounds funny, but the guys still have a working website. It's now called Open Mobile Platform, and it seems you can even buy a device on this system. They can probably be purchased by the military, government, and just someone with budget, but otherwise, you don't hear anything about Sailfish or Aurora online. Nokia itself got magnetized to Microsoft and started making only Windows Phone devices. And I like this system no less than Mego. I think it has beautiful design, excellent logic, and it's very sad that now it's almost impossible to use. In connection with this, I have only one question. Will we see anything other than Android and iOS in the next five years? These systems became monopolies in the smartphone market simply because of the huge number of apps. Will Huawei dare to switch to their own system? Time will tell, but it would be very interesting to watch. The N9 is a beautiful smartphone that Nokia fans still remember as the last true Finnish phone. That's where we'll wrap up. Thanks everyone, and bye!